Greetings. Welcome to match hat number three, Defender of the Crown. One of my favorite games of all time, uh, for one of my most beloved computer platforms of all time, the Commodore Amiga. I have uh, a lot of uh, personal memories of this game, a lot of fun times, and I hope you'll enjoy uh, my coverage of this uh, wonderful game. Um, if you don't know me, I'm the author of a couple of books on um, video games. One is uh, Dungeons and Desktops, a book about uh, computer role-playing games published by A.K. Peters last year. Hundreds of games ranging from uh, Ultima to uh, Diablo, to, uh, Pool of Radiance, uh, just hundreds of uh, great games. I hope you'll check this out. I'm also the co-author of a book with my friend and long-term collaborator Bill Judas of Vintage Games. This book covers uh, all sorts of uh, games that we consider to be some of the most influential of all time. Uh, games like uh, Pac-Man, um, Flight Simulator, um, Ultima again, uh, so, so games you've probably heard of, uh, but some that you uh, might be surprised to find in a collection like this. Um, and by the way, some exciting news about this book is it's being made into a documentary uh, feature, uh, feature film by Lux Digital Pictures. And again, uh, Bill and I will be directing and producing that uh, film. It's uh, called Woot at the moment, so it should be uh, good times ahead. Uh, okay, so without uh, further ado then, let's get into Defender of the Crown. CinemaWare's 1986 game, Defender of the Crown, was one of the uh, very first uh, major games for the new Commodore Amiga 1000 computer, uh, which had uh, debuted just a year earlier in uh, 1985. The Commodore Amiga 1000 was a very special computer for, for many reasons. It had uh, very nice graphics, uh, four-channel stereo sound, uh, the ability to multitask, is obviously a very capable machine uh, for, the, for the era. Uh, but it was still waiting for a, a really brilliant, uh, high-quality game uh, to get it started as a, a viable gaming platform. What CinemaWare tried to accomplish was to make a, a game that played out like a movie. So it would be very theatrical, very uh, have a lot of cinematics, uh, cutscenes, and uh, good music, and very uh, high-quality graphics that weren't so distinct from what you might see at the theater. The way the game itself works is a basic strategy game uh, wrapped around a series of uh, mini-games, and I'll try to show you uh, these different mini-games, uh, starting off here with the Joust. Uh, I have to admit, though, I'm no good at this, and I never did quite get the hang of it. Uh, but as you can see there, the idea is, of course, to knock the opponent off his horse, and in return for that, you can win land or fame. The basic goal of the game is to take over all of these territories by eliminating all of the other lords uh, that are competing for the crown. Um, and sometimes this involves this uh, really neat catapult scene. So the idea here is that you very carefully use this catapult, you have to have a very delicate hand on the mouse to destroy this wall far enough down to where your men can enter. Some of the other later versions of this game would let you do more. Uh, for example, you could throw those uh, Greek fire into the castle. Uh, but the, the original Amiga version was just the rocks. Uh, here we have a... see how quick these battles play out. It's just a numbers game. Who has more troops <laughs> basically determines the result of those battles. You might notice here that I have uh, 
a picture of a, a lady next to me. Uh, that is my wife <laughs> in this game. A very neat feature, which I'll show you in a, in a second, is that you can um, find a wife, rescue her. Uh, so periodically throughout the game, uh, you'll get these messages about the Normans kidnapping a Saxon lady. <laughs> and of course, you are going to attempt to rescue her. Um, this little mini game here is the raiding or sword fighting scene that uh, is used for a couple of uh, different actions in the game. But as you can see there, it's a pretty simple interface. You are supposed to uh, click the left mouse button and uh, move back and forth to try to uh, avoid uh, being killed by this by the guards. And it takes a little practice but if you um, what I like to do is just stand in the spot and then keep moving forward and just, just uh, hitting the, the left mouse button as quickly as possible. And what's going to follow here is one of, <laughs> uh, I think, one of my favorite dramatic scenes in all of uh, video games. So you've you've rescued the princess, and she's been at your castle for a while, and uh, she I guess she gets a little worked up. <laughs> I've got uh, Anne the Blonde here, but there are three other princesses that's uh, just random uh, which one you end up with. I think everybody, especially uh, young boys who played this game, will remember quite fondly the uh, <laughs> uh, the scene. And, you know, it probably is about as, as close as many of us got to a woman <laughs> at that point of our lives. So just to skip ahead here a bit, I'll show you a few things. Uh, one nice thing about the game is that you can uh, click on Sherwood Forest at any time to get some help from Robin Hood. Robin Hood and his merry men play a role in the plot as well, uh, as you'll see here in a second. So we're about to take on the very last castle. If we could just get in there, <laughs> we will be the King of England. I just have to admire these beautiful graphics by um, a graphic artist named Sax, or maybe it's Sox, not really sure how to pronounce it, but definitely one of the most well-known Amiga artists. And Later on he did the aquarium screensaver that you've probably seen. So, just so happened that that castle was unguarded. <laughs> so, very easy victory for us. Defender of the, the Crown is really not that difficult of a game. Um, and it's not a very long game either. You can play, play through a whole game of this probably in half an hour, maybe uh, 45 minutes. So, there you have it, a quick run through of one of the most famous games ever for the Commodore Amiga computer, Defender of the Crown. If you are any <laughs> anything like an Amiga fan, you'll definitely want to play this one. Well, until next time, uh, that's all for this week's Matt Chat.